four different books come in the 7TV Fantasy box, covering all you need to play the game. In this video, we're going to flip through the main one, which covers the actual rules. That's the Director's Guide. And as we go, we'll highlight the key gameplay and background elements that make up this new fantasy skirmish offering from Crooked Dice and Edge Hill University Press. The Director's Guide is listed as the first volume of the four books, and that's because you'll learn all of 7TV Fantasy's core rules from it. It's a great looking, softback, landscape format, full colour, 42 page book. There's a brief welcome that defines what 7TV Fantasy is, and in short, that's a way to play games that are set in pretty much any fantasy genre you can think of. And after that, it gets into what is special about the 7TV system, and that is that there's a meta game, and that goes beyond just playing a fantasy scenario and to making a movie or a television show. Now this can be as big a part of your overall narrative as you want, but we really like it, it's a good way to mix things up, and it remains a really unique selling point behind 7TV. It's worth mentioning that while this is a standalone product, it will be very familiar to anyone who's checked out the second edition rules that 7TV have already put out there, but it's just got some fantasy extras. The guide gets into gameplay basics, starting with a breakdown of base sizes, squares and rounds are both fine, and they'll come in different dimensions for your different sizes of characters. And after that, the dice roll details get defined. Rolls are always done on d6s, and the standard system is that you combine the number of dice you roll to get an overall total. Now these are called simple rolls, but there is also an alternative system called boostable rolls. For boostable rolls, you take only the highest result from your dice pool, and you add a plus one to that for every other dice that was a four or more. These are used in different circumstances throughout the game. Also, at times in the game, you may need to make a statistic test. That requires rolling against the basic table, shown in the rules. It's all pretty simple stuff, and it will quickly become second nature once you get gaming. As dice rolls are at the core of just about all of the game's actions, we think it's quite a good thing that they're placed really prominently at the start of the rules and in their own section. Moving on, we get to plot points, and these are what another game might call action points. They're essentially how you drive your cast of characters around the board and get them to perform various tasks. Throughout the rules, they're represented by a star symbol, and this is something that 7TV Fantasy uses to keep its rules clean little refinements in the layout, and this is good stuff. The guy gets into profiles next. We talk about these in our unboxing video that we've already got online, so if you want more specific details, why not head on over there? Instead of focusing on that, what we will do is take the chance to reinforce the compliment we gave to the book's layout earlier by adding there are some really great photos in it. I mean, look at these stop motion type monsters duking it out. They look really great. Much of the rest of the guide gets into the fundamentals, going through the structure of the game and how the components are used within it. Each turn has three phases. These are the trilogy phase, the action phase, and the end phase. The active size during these phases is referred to as on screen, and that's just one of many touches that 7TV uses to reflect the cinematic metaverse element of things. The trilogy phase uses the game's trilogy cards to generate acts, and these will determine the length of the gameplay overall. How many trilogy cards are used is determined by the table size. In terms of gameplay, the first act tends to be movement and getting people in position. The second act is where more of the attacks actually get started. And then there's the finale, which is when more impactful and game-changing moments happen. The trilogy deck's cards are designed to play into this, giving little boosts to characters under certain circumstances, and those are always with some thematic name or element in their description. It's a neat way of bringing narrative and gameplay practicalities together. Many of the specific rules are covered in the action phase section, which runs from page 18 to 29. Those actions are divided into move, strike, special and free actions, and each of those gets their own subchapter. Models are activated using their plot points, and players can also spend plot points to remove negative statuses, of which there's quite a few. As a good quality skirmish game demands, especially a cinematic one, there are many movement options, and these are described and defined really clearly. Thanks to the solid layout throughout this book and the other guides, you'll be able to scan the pages quickly and easily and find what you need. 
and there are more great and thematic photos of figure setups here too, with some nice tongue-in-cheek captions. Strikes are made to determine combat, and they follow a simple procedure for all of the different attacks available to models. A target or targets are picked, line of sight and range of them is determined, and then a strike is made against each of the available targets. For these strikes, a defense roll is made first, then the attacker must make a strike roll, and that roll must exceed or equal the defense roll. Now this is a bit backwards, if you like, compared to the more standard order of taking hits that we see in games, where someone will make their attempted hits, and then the defender will try and make saves. But we quite like the way that 7TV have done it, because it kind of forces the drama. The active player will always be given the potential, through chance, to do something highly unlikely, and that could be for good or bad. It manages to feel a bit more cinematic because of this, which is quite key to the game's overall scope. There are various modifiers that can apply to these actions, and these are listed on the relevant character cards. Everything within the guide is summed up in simple illustrations, while the associated text details any extra details relevant. That's true of the defense role, and also the strike role. Different modifiers will apply to each role, and in the case of the strike role, the guide actually shows a specific attack from the card of one of the game's villainous stars. The action phase's details wrap up with special, free, and passive actions. These are things like character-specific activations that can happen out of combat, or the star qualities actions that only stars and co-stars have. These are activated by spending the required plot points that are listed, and are another way the game makes those characters feel extra special. The end phase is where you determine if you can continue actually gaming with your cast, you also deal with status effects in this phase, and there's a chance to steal the scene. Now stealing the scene is a once per game option for each player, and it allows them to take the momentum into an instant extra turn where they have the initiative. If you use that wisely, it can really turn the tide of a battle. If you use it poorly, well, you've wasted it. Status is a detail through the end of this section, with symbols that match up with the MDF tokens included in the game. There's all the stuff you'd expect in skirmish gaming, stunned, poisoned, and so on. But there's also some more unique stuff, such as captured or dominated. The former gives more story drama, while the later offers up a shift of allegiance, as if a model's been charmed to fight against their former friends. And these are really cool little gameplay dynamics that make battles feel quite different and quite unique. To finish this guide, there's a look at the different sort of attacks you can make. These broadly fall into three categories, fight, shoot, and presence. Presence is one worth uh, mentioning because it's actually a new attack for 7TV Fantasy. It represents more of a short range and often more quirky non-standard attack. Grizzled Cynicism, for example, will not actually do damage, but it will distract the target and soften them up for the next attack. There's Magic too, detailed in six grimoires that contain all of the spellcasting coolness we can imagine, healing, conjuring, natural, demonic, necromantic, and illusion spells. Things round out with artifacts, these are the magic trinket type options so common in fantasy screenplays. And then at the very end, there's an example turn that lets you follow exactly how the game works step by step. That's a lot to squeeze into one relatively low page count book, but it's all done very well. It looks good, it reads well, and it's extremely easy to go from guide to tabletop gaming. If you throw in the producer's guide for scenarios, which are called chapters in the world of 7TV, the casting guide for the creation of your cast of gaming stars and co-stars and extras, and then the encounter guide, which has tons of extra gaming modifiers, well, you're going to be ready to play an infinite number of fantasy productions. And if you want to know more about those books, we'll have another flip of those very soon. This video has been brought to you by WI Prime, Wargames Illustrated Magazine's online members club. View more videos or find out more about WI Prime by following these links.